NXT 2016. This is interviews, music reviews, opinions, and more. This is, this is The Hotter Show. What is up, everybody? We are rolling out of you here today on episode 277 of The Hotter Show. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. Thanks so very much for tuning in and clicking that play button on the final episode of The Hotter Show for 2020. I think I speak for everybody when I say we're all pretty much ready to move on from this year. And, uh, well, to end off the year, it has kind of become a bit of a tradition here on the show that we do a little bit of an end-of-the-year recap. Of course, uh, the last episode of the show, I did have the um, kind of my – some people call it like almost like my 2020 wrapped of some of my favorite bands and my favorite songs that have been on the show this year. That was great. So thank you very much to all the bands for their support on that and sharing it. I do very much appreciate it. So now it's kind of time to take a look at the other side of it with, you know, talking about some of my favorite episodes, talking about some goals and things of that nature for this year with my good buddy, Josh from still loading podcast. Now, full disclosure, this episode was recorded for his podcast with the intent of it kind of being a crossover. So it's kind of basically like Josh kind of hosts the episode a little bit and then we kind of go back and forth and he talks a little bit about some of his goals for this year that he hit some of his favorite episodes and kind of some other fun moments of the year. I of course talk about mine. There's so many episodes um, to talk about. I only really, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of give a brief synopsis of some of my favorite of the year and why, because there was a lot of great content this year. I'm very proud of this year, my body of work. I don't feel like I really had any missteps maybe aside from one or two small ones that I thought weren't, you know, as great as the previous episode was, but I stand behind everything I did this year. I really do. And that's a great feeling because everything that has happened this year, you know, we all could use a little more uh, positive thinking. So <laughs> that's uh, that's very good. And I hope you guys are ready to celebrate tonight. As you guys are hearing this, we are of course turning over to 2021, you know, be safe and enjoy responsibly if you are partaking. Uh, you shouldn't be going to any parties or anything, uh, but if you're in your own home, like I'm going to be, uh, you know, just, you know, still be responsible. You don't have to drive anywhere, which is nice, but still don't overdo it. You know, be safe, stay healthy. That's the main thing. And I hope you guys had a very wonderful Christmas. We jump into the episode, kind of the end of the year wrap up. I'm on board with Josh from Still Loading Podcast. I want to give a second to give a quick shout out and much needed shout out to my friend, Mr. Jason Reese from Jaybridge's Alerts. If you're watching the video version, you see right here, my man. He, of course, does everything for the Hotter Show logos, banners, social media stuff, the video overlay for uh, that you're going to see in just a couple minutes here. Uh, t shirts, memes, literally anything that I have done. As far as graphic design is concerned, Jason has done for me. And Jason, thank you so much, my man, for all of your hard work this year. Your continued support. You know I love you. And we will keep kicking ass and taking names in 2021. Of course, I want to give a big shout out to my friends over at Mean Beard. The Meanest Beard Worldwide Contest is officially over. They will be announcing the top 12 and the eventual top three and then the eventual winner in the next coming week. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. And if you are, uh, you know, in need of taking care of your, maybe your new quarantine beard, if you're growing a beard in lockdown over the next month, check out meanbeardco.com. Take care of that beard with the meanest beard products in the entire world. And if you need any help, you're not sure what to get. You're not sure what scent. You're not sure what even is beard care products. Be Feel free to hit me up. I will be happy to, uh, to walk you through it. Again, meanbeardco.com. Be sure to use my code, TJ. Of course, if you are going to check it out, be sure to use my code at checkout, MB15TJH. That's MB, both lower uppercase letters, MB15TJH, all uppercase. And check out the meanest beard care products in the world. Without further ado, we're ready to roll in today's episode, my end of the year review with my boy Josh for Still Learning Podcast. Let's get into it. What's up, buddy? It's been a while. Actually, the last time we recorded, while. Since I heard. <laughs> the last time we recorded an episode together was the Podbeard crossover with the the No Geeks Allowed for the quarantine episode yes. back in like March or April. Yeah, it was March. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I think it was 
March. I think it was March. Yeah, like March 18th or 19th or somewhere around there. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, somewhere in that ballpark. Actually, you know what? To kind of just get right into it, we should talk about the Podbeard Network. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Excuse me, guys. Holy cow. So quite simply, folks, I haven't really spoken about it at all. This is the first and only time I'm going to speak about it. Um, Podbeard Network has now been laid to rest. Um, it's all good. Everything's fine. Um, yeah, it, it's not really a humongous deal. It's basically just something that what I initially did when I started it, it kind of turned into something else that it wasn't. And for lack of a better term, it kind of sort of failed miserably. So <laughs> I just finally said, okay, <laughs> when it's just going to be, there's just two people left on it. You know, yeah, just me yeah. And Josh holding it down, and I was like, okay, you know what? I, I was already like, okay, this is just this is just getting sad, and you know, so I just kind of said, okay, let's just. It happens quietly. But quietly it was, it was the good road. while it lasted, and yes, it doesn't mean that definitely. it's not going to come back. It's just at the moment. It uh, it's just me. It was just me and you, pretty much, because mm-hmm. everyone else either unfortunately had stuff to do they, their life got in the way mm-hmm. or whatnot and honestly 2020 just got in the way this year has been yeah. the year from hell <laughs> to put it mildly through this year <laughs> and it's weird for me to say that because honestly this has been one of my best years in terms of content mm-hmm. for my show but i feel weird being happy about that when the year itself has been such shit well that's the interesting thing about it is like when i speak with people who have had relatively good years all things considered like i mean all things considered i've had a somewhat okay year like i've had some pretty good good stuff after me this year but like you know the fucking world's on fire (laughs) so it's like how how can we say oh yes let's talk about all these great things that happened and let's talk about you know this great content and all this stuff and you've killed it this year and you've had some great growth so it's like it's a little hard to kind of you know, be happy about it and and talk about it in such a high regard when, you know, it just, you feel guilty about and being happy about your accomplishments when there's so much else going wrong in the world. I mean, it's good to be proud of your accomplishments, but at the same time, I just feel a a tinge of not regret, but definitely a tinge of guilt being like happy about stuff. And it's not to say that my year hasn't had other downsides. It just by comparison, I feel it's nowhere near what everyone else has to gone through mm-hmm. between all the the protests for racial ju- injustice that's been going on. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, the people losing jobs because of the pandemic and being cooped up because of the pandemic. And I've been fortunate. My job, I never lost my job. I could still work. I still was able, I was able to work from home for a few months. I'm back at the office now, but it just, I feel guilty that I actually had a pretty decent year all things considered the the biggest thing for me is my uh, without going into too much detail just because i i think i mentioned it on instagram a while ago but my grandparents passed away this year Mm -hmm. uh the last remaining ones on my on my parents side or my mom's side so that that i mean that's still a little raw i still get emotional i'm actually getting a little emotional get a little misty-eyed right now thinking about it but uh but other than that like my year has been relatively good and i just feel really fucking guilty for enjoying it well and i think the thing is too is like a lot of people i speak with recently especially like you gotta really try to focus on the positives especially at a time like this i'm really trying really really hard to focus on the positives right now because there is so much bad and there's so much negativity and there's so many people who are just so angry all the time because I mean, especially in the entertainment world, you know, that's kind of like my, 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 my thing, you know, and I speak with bands and stuff like that. And there's a band that in particular, I know that like, this was their year. They put everything they had into oh, this year. They have not, sucks. they've got like, they, they have to completely regroup and it's like, Hey, we had a tour booked. We put money into it. They bought a van. Like this was their year. This was their, we're going to push this year. And they're like, we don't know what we're going to do. We got, we got nothing left. And And, it's just, it breaks my heart. It's brutal. It's been an absolutely brutal year, but we don't want to dwell on the negative. Like you said, we do want to focus on the positives. Focus on the positive. Um, And 
this for this episode beside last last year we just kind of talked we really just we went into some deep psychology last year we did like right out of the gate it was like the first right 10 minutes into it i'm like what the fuck? <laughs> hey it was good it was a good content i i like those kinds of deep conversations i never mind that but it, it was just kind of like listening back. I was like, oh my God, we, we like wasted no time. We just went right into like, yeah. well, this is what's wrong with my brain. And, this is uh, what's wrong with my brain. Psychoanalyzing <laughs> each other, you know? Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? Well, and it's not to say that we shouldn't still kind of have those kind of, kinds of conversations, but mm-hmm. I think 2020 just, it's, everyone's had such a rough year. Let's kind of like, I, let's just yeah. try to keep it light. Um, it's, been it's been a year that's literally all i can say about it but it's been a year it's been a year been a year uh murder <laughs> <laughs> but um no so what i wanted to kind of talk about is just what are some of our favorite episodes that we did this year personally because like i said it, like we said before it's a retrospective like what did you enjoy hmm. about your our show specifically this year and what are the things that we wish we could have done better um, I can tell you personally, one of the things I wish I would have done better, and I'm going to try to keep this, my own constructive criticism to a minimum. Cause you know, I think I even mentioned it last year. Like, you don't people don't like to hear someone rag on themselves all that much. Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to keep this brief. I, when I was doing a lot of the interviews this year, which I'm very happy with, I had a lot of fantastic interviews this year. Um, I noticed I would give a lot of personal anecdotes to, try to relate more to the person I'm interviewing. And I even mentioned this in 2019 and I didn't learn my lesson, but there was chunks of it that I, that no one has heard on the episode because I cut out like a 10 minute chunk in the Sissy Jones episode of the first one. Cause at this time, the time this is episodes being released, the second Sissy Jones episode will already have been out. Um, But I cut out like 10 minutes of just me rambling about something, just some bullshit. I'm like, well, what? was i talking about i don't even understand how this relates to the topic at hand so i towards the end of the year i got better at that i would say in like my mike micah interview episode my my first game developer Mm -hmm. i got better at that so that was a negative that i saw and i kind of started to work towards it so i'm pretty happy with that um i don't know if this is interesting listeners if it is not once again just let us know we give us some feedback on it uh but i i kind of I don't know. I like hearing that behind the scenes stuff for other podcasts. So I figured I'd kind of give a little behind the scenes of like I my thought fine. process for I, mine. Well, put it this way as a fan, as a legit fan of yours, I like hearing this. So I don't care what your listeners want. I want to hear about <laughs> it. So, <laughs> um, but that, so that was, that, that was not my least favorite episode, but it was something where I was just kind of like, ah, oh, man, that's a learning. I need, I need to do better. I can do better. I know I can, and I will do better. So I want to continue to work on that. Um, but as for favorite episodes, my personal favorites, and I remember you complimented this one a while ago, but uh, well, one, it was the, my first Sissy Jones episode, and the second one was great too, but the first one just because yeah. the first time I had a voice actor on, which was just- That was great. Yeah. Blows my mind. But the second, my second favorite, ep- my most favorite episode, but uh, the, let me rephrase that. My other favorite episode is the one I did with my wife on Stardew Valley. That was definitely yes. my favorite episode. So good. Um, what about you, sir? What, what were some of your favorite episodes that you did this year? Well, there's two for sure that stand out that I have to mention. Um, one of which was an interview that I did that I have been wanting to do for a long time. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I said last year, and we're going to touch on this probably a little bit more later, but one thing I said last year that I wanted to improve on this year was I wanted to reach out to at least one guest that I was going to be nervous to talk to. And for me, that guest was a guy by the name of Hoogie. And mm-hmm. Hoogie on the road, he is a touring guitar tech, bass tech. He's, I've been following his career basically since 2011, 2012. Mm-hmm. And I'm a legit fan of his. And he's currently, well, he was touring with Shinedown at the time. If you guys are familiar with Shinedown, he's the bass tech. And I got linked up with him through Mean Beard and shout out yes sponsor and, well your sponsor mm-hmm. yes i mean it could be your sponsor too you know you just keep i don't growing have that. much of a beard dude i can't even keep growing that so yeah, I have listen this man thing. it's not the beard it's the attitude you well, are i don't mean. have that either. i can tell you that no you are 100 percent. mean is is a state of mind it's a positive aggressive <laughs> attitude sir it's not that's mean not, is not how i was raised to believe the word mean yeah, see, but it mean it means something different now 
Oh, it means it's the whole point. Yeah, it something means different. something different now, sir. <laughs> Positive, aggressive attitude, bro. That's what it's all about. Positive. Stand up for something. That's so like on the, so forth. that's the new version of passive aggressive. It's positive yeah. aggressive. You are so fucking handsome. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand that, and it's like I I have to like explain it so much, and I'm like, just you just say anyway, really yeah. positive things angrily. You are so well, no, silly. No, it's like looking. Well, you you think about people. It's like oh, like they're just aggressive and they're just assholes. Why not use that same type of energy to be positive about things? Meaning instead of being aggressively negative all the time, be aggressively positive. It's not necessarily the aggressive more is just a, a term in relates to a way that someone does something. Yeah, like yeah. you go on Facebook, oh, this is stupid. Oh, this is dumb. Oh, what well, just use that same attitude to be positive. That's it. It's that simple. Anyway, I didn't mean to go off that much of a tangent there. I apologize, folks. One second. Um, um, before we move on, Courtney texted me. They got that fake Christmas tree. It apparently was a floor model, so they don't have a box for it. So they need my help bringing in. Can you just give me okay. like yeah, one yeah, second? Man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Be right thing. back. I don't even know if she's here, um, but I think she is. So I'll be right okay. back. Okay, all good, man. Yeah, all good. Hey, Josh. Hey, big boy. I don't know if you're going to see this, but my light just fell over. <laughs> I was trying to seduce you. Oh, fuck. Hang on. Oh, shit. There we go. It's Dean Malenko. Legendary professional wrestler. What else do I got over here? I'm not going to try and seduce you anymore. Got my <clears throat> picture of Sam and I, of course. Jay Bridges, Larts, Mean Beard, Uncle Woe, CD, <clears throat> Clint Lowry's Hell Demons Me Skeletons uh, lyric book, Austin Chains Dirt. Cats are over there. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So, all right, they they had it. They already had it was already in. Of course, <laughs> oh, of course. They're like, thanks for the help. Oh, sorry. No, she wasn't upset. I was just like, I, I when I saw you didn't respond, I assumed that meant you were you were home. So recording the podcast. Um, she knew I was recording, so she okay. felt bad about it. Um, okay. Uh, so the last thing you're talking about, you went over the whole mean well, philosophy. You know what we can just do? Let's just cut that whole shit out. Cause it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Like just, I don't remember what I was talking about before. Um, is that mean beard sponsor? And then I'll just move on. Cause okay. just, it just, it's, you know what I mean? Like just, it's, it's just silly. Sure. To, Go for it. You know, uh, this isn't an infomercial for mean beard. So I don't know, mate, <laughs> but I like, I like my, you're so fucking handsome thing. Oh, fair enough. We'll keep, see. Not we'll keep see. it in. Fuck you. I'll, I'll leave it up to you. You keep it in. Okay. But I'll just say anyway, blah, and I'll get in the okay. mic. Okay. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. Mean Beard. Shout out to Woo Woo. I got hooked up with Hoogie through them. Big fan of his. And I got to interview him. And, man, let me tell you. I don't get nervous a lot about with interviews. Um, even if I don't know the person, like I just don't get, I don't, I don't get nervous anymore. I used to, but this one was like, it was a big deal for me. And mm -hmm. he's someone I have so much respect for. And I am such a fan of his. And he was so cool. It was such a great chat. He, excuse me. He had some great stories and it was just, uh, it was really, really fun. From that interview. Also another person, I need to give a shout out to for a great interview this year it was a guy, guy by the name of Tyler Boone, okay. um, who is a singer songwriter from California uh, with some serious traction, badass guy. And uh, he actually hit me up and was like, Hey, I want to be on your show. I like your style. And I was really? like, really, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, man. I was like, Oh, cause he heard me with Hoogie. He knows Hoogie. So he was like, I really like your interviewing style. I'd like to talk to you. And I was like, cool. And, 
he offered me a sponsorship with his bourbon company, which unfortunately is not available in Canada at the moment. So I was like, oh, I would kill to have some Boone's bourbon. I mean, you could still do the sponsorship, but just, just say, uh, it's kind of weird because I can't get it, but you all well, that's, should Yeah, buy that's it. more my thing. I was like, buddy, like, like 70% of my listenership is in Canada. So it's like, I just, I can't, I don't know if it's going to be worth it for you to do. We're going to do it one day for sure though, because it's coming. But uh, those are two for sure that stand out to me. Um, one, I got a couple, I got to give an honor mention to real quick. I had Sam on the podcast again. This mm-hmm. was definitely my favorite one of the whole year. I had her on for an ask Sam anything, which was literally people sending questions for her. To roast there was you. some hilarious oh yeah dude like just <laughs> just like, she was pretty good like because she, she started off so nervous right like she's like oh my god i sound like a bitch i'm like no you sound nervous like it's just she's not used to it it's not like when you had courtney on it was like where well, she's like a natural she just right away totally was vibing and was she just was totally nervous into too it. she was i mean you couldn't because i don't do video component so you couldn't see her face i mm-hmm. think if i would have done video she would have been a lot more nervous but yeah, she was very, very nervous when I recorded with her. So it, it, I'm glad it didn't come across in the audio. But trust me, she was like, she was very kind of like bottled up, like mm-hmm. very kind of tightened up like this. And you know, she's just, uh, she was just very anxious. And I could kind of see it. And when she would speak, it was a lot more like almost asking, like, is this okay that I say this? It was kind of, it was, it wasn't strange, but I could kind of get that vibe. And I'm like, no, no, it's it, you be you. Like that's all Do that matters thing. to me. That's money. Exactly. I, I, I'm telling you right now. You can tell her again that TJ said, listen. <laughs> Spilling the tea with Courtney? Spilling the tea. I will, I will fund it. Okay? Like, seriously. <laughs> I mean, we can just go to Anchor again for free. You don't need to give us ah, money. You know. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll fund it on Anchor. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, no, I'll be your manager. It's fine. I, I do want to do, do that at some point. Honestly, once... Uh, the, you know once the new year maybe that that might be an option for that's no guarantee we're not we haven't even talked about it but mm-hmm. she might have some more or less time i don't know we'll see how the new year's then we'll explain i'll explain why i'm unsure about that yeah your new year's gonna episode. be interesting yeah yeah for sure at the end yeah at the end of the episode um definitely but that was one episode for me that was just like really special um and then there's just one more i want to give a quick shout out to there was tons of great episodes this year i was blessed to have so many really really great episodes um the episode i actually did uh with my boys in judgment i did an interview with them it was a video interview it was the first time i did this type of style um that was like i had like a border and everything i just put a little bit more work into it jason from jay bridges larts mm-hmm Whoop, whoop, wearing his shirt um he <laughs> went out of his gritty, way man. well that's cool too though i'm a gritizen <laughs> <laughs> i'm always i'm decked out in sponsors every time bro i'm, I'm a whore so <laughs> i am easy you I send know. me stuff that's all I of your facebook it. posts every single one is like bro. it's it's a mean beard sponsor i'm like all right uh i don't have a beard I so i'm mean, just gonna not move on. every post <laughs> it's either look, it's one of these four things it's either podcasting stuff it's mean beard. It's me sharing a sponsor or it's like my cats. Basically there's no in between. What about your fiance? Well, that too. Five things. Yes. It's one uh, of those five things. There's never any. I like else. how you forgot your fiance on your list. <laughs> Listen, you're trying to get me in trouble. No, but <laughs> the reason that episode was so special on top of the fact that it was a, just a really great chat. Uh, that was the last episode that I recorded uh, with my cat, Steve, who we just had to put down on uh, yeah. mid-November. I'm, I'm still heart- and, sorry to hear that, man. Well, thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Um, what's actually kind of funny, guys, I'm not going to lie to you right now. Um, right now, both my other cats are sitting to my left here, and they never usually do when I record. So it's really? kind of warming my heart right now. I'm not going to lie. Because um, he used to sit right over there. Steve did. And that was the last episode the day before we put him down and he had a really good day that day. So like he was chilling and it was just like really, you know what I mean? Like just, I didn't think anything of it at the time, but now it's like, okay, that episode's going to be special for me forever for that reason. And which episode um, was it again? That, that was uh, episode 273. I had a, uh, the band judgment on and it okay. was, a, it was a great chat. Like it, it was so much fun. They're great guys. They were great guests, but I had tons of great guests and great interview this year, but uh, just that one was special for that reason. Um, and yeah, I guess the, the, the only other thing I kind of want to make sure I mentioned because it was funny and actually you, you're kind of related to this too. Um, 
for Halloween, I did a paranormal story readings uh, that people sent into the show. And the reason why Josh is connected to this is because last year I did a one for Christmas, like horror stories, which I am doing again this year, by the way. Okay. Um, which, so if you guys haven't heard that, go back and check it out. I dropped yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, the, the, week the of time Christmas. we're recording this, it's actually December earlier. 5th. <laughs> so we're, yo, okay. <laughs> Just, just kill i wasn't gonna i wasn't gonna say it was this early but it's no this no early. no it's a, there were I, I like breaking that illusion early on so no one, <laughs> everyone well, knows exactly I what they're need, getting i'm like okay today i'm like i know i have time i know we can get it done let's just do it so that like yeah, i don't no, let you it, down later in the month <laughs> no dude don't worry about it i it's we're recording this a month out from the end of the year just because it's been a crazy year and and also i have a lot of other recording i'm going to be doing this month yeah you got a lot going on once again at the end of the episode yes um, but sorry finish what you're saying i was just, just going to say but the, the reason why josh is connected to that is because with the christmas one i did last year he listened to it and he gave me some really good constructive feedback where he said you know hey it was good but maybe pay more attention to how you're you read certain things it's just you're using the exact same voice throughout the whole thing and I was like, oh, I forgot okay, I said that. yeah. I was like, okay, like, yeah, because I had this voice I really liked. And a lot of people who don't podcast and they do voice work were like, oh my god, like it's so good. But this year when I did it, I kept that in mind. So when I did like reactionary stuff, I did it in like a normal voice. Like, you know, someone's on the phone and someone asks them a question, I said it in that in a normal voice. So it just made it that much better. And I had a couple people were like, dude, that was like next level voiceover work and i was like thanks josh um so <laughs> well I, you're welcome yeah. i guess for you know <laughs> busting your balls about it but none of the learning tree bro but, but yeah at, at the end of the day it, it's been great i've had some you know two of the biggest guests i've ever had um i was able to crush one of my goals um i had sam on that episode some great interviews killer stuff you know, the Podbeard Network crossover was so much fun. Oh my God, that was there's so just fun. Been, there's just been a lot of really great content this year. So those are a few definitely that I want to make sure I shout out. Um, but yeah, that, the Podbeard Network crossover with the geeks was... It's a shame because now that the Podbeard Network's over, that was the first and only. <laughs> that was the first everyone. and only crossover. Um, but we didn't even get everyone on. We didn't get uh, Sam and Ryan from Mike's and Beers on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was there as a representative for Mike's and Beers. It's there like, you th go. It never would have worked. N oh, there never been so many worked. people. Well, no, it's not that. I just schedule wise, we yeah. never would have made it, it happen. It would have been really difficult. Ever. I would have had to have literally, basically driven to get them, brought them back here, oh, geez. and linked up with you guys to make it happen. That's how bad <laughs> the scheduling is. So, um, yeah. Anyway. And for, I, I was pleasantly surprised. A lot of my goals, I mentioned at the end of the year, I had a big project and it was the summer of PS2. As all, Yes, I was so excited for that. I, I, it, it happened. I got it done. I was really Yay. happy with that. Um, I think that was the only real goal that I had, but it, it fucking happened. Um, <laughs> the only other goal that I also had that it didn't happen was what I mentioned before, where I tend to ramble too much in my interviews, which been fixing as time goes on but still it's something i i'm you know like i said gotta work on it and you get you get better with stuff too right? oh, like that's 100%. one thing i said to you last year like if there's one thing that I'll also i kind of uh, i guess learned this year in a way was the confidence in myself number one as a interviewer and also i'm like hey like i'm pretty good at this <laughs> like, i i have this confidence right now that i I mean, maybe not right now sitting here today, but like normally when I'm like full of energy and rocking and rolling and firing on all cylinders, I'm like, hey, I'm pretty fucking good at this because I've put work into it. But it's something I even like I said to you last year, I'm like, you're naturally already so good at it. I and I feel that. like I can say that because I've done it for a while. And, and this isn't me circle jerking you or whatever. Don't worry. I'm not going to spend Too 20 minutes. circles and jerks. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do a single jerk. Um, <laughs> oh, but God. Like, no, but like even me. Not like in I, front of the camera. Oh, geez. I got to hang on. I got to, I got to stop video. Hang on. <laughs> but um, like, well, no, like the thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most disgusting sound. I don't know oh how loud God. you could hear that. Oh, I didn't, it didn't pop. Hang on. Damn it. Why can't I pop? <laughs> Fuck. Never mind. Sounds like a personal um, problem, Teach. Anyway. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, but we just did that. But anyway, I don't even know what I was saying. All I was saying is you're really good <laughs> and you're getting better and it takes time. Like you, yes, you've been podcasting for what, six years now? Six years. Yeah. But, but yeah. you've only really been interviewing quote unquote for like two. Yeah. So really you're going to get, yeah, you're going to, and you're actually interviewing. So that's something that it takes reps. It takes time to do that. And I think you're already, I think you're already great at it, but then also you mentioned the personal thing. And the reason why I kind of um, agree and disagree with that statement is I think that with certain people, especially people who are like have some stroke and have notoriety and things of that nature, um, they want to relate to the person they're speaking with in some way. It makes them more comfortable, most people anyway, in well, my experience. Assume, but do yeah. you need to spend 10 minutes rambling on? Probably not. I but. cut out like a 15-minute monologue of bullshit. 15-minute <laughs> monologue. Oh, my God. It was so So dumb. anyway, when I, I was 17, it, I discovered porn. No. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> imagine like all the people i'm interviewing like holy shit <laughs> this shit, this shit man um, yeah so anyway i turned no. on i was turned on to <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna say i was gonna say something i didn't i'm just gonna i'm on. glad you didn't <laughs> yeah i'm glad i didn't either no, I was there was a funny shit. just i don't know why i guess because you said the phrase turned on it just made me think of this one story from when i used to work and i promise it's not dirty despite the phrase turned on um I used to work at a grocery store and I think, I don't know if I've told this story before, but I, re- I just remember I might've, I might've on the podcast, but in any case, uh, I was working at a grocery store and I asked a lady if she wanted paper or plastic bags and she goes, Oh, whatever turns you on. And I just kind of stared at her for a second. I'm like, uh, Ooh, I mean, uh, you know, I didn't have anything to say to her, but in my head, I'm like, well, neither one of these things are really doing it for me. So I don't know what you're, <laughs> what you want lady. It's one of the weirdest responses I ever got to that question. Paper or plastic, oh, whatever turns you on. That's that's very uncomfortable. <laughs> what uncomfortable. even the fuck do you say to that? I'm, the the most weird responses I ever got working retail was in GameStop. Uh, grocery stores, I you got just more angry people, just mm-hmm. kind of run of the mill grumps. Sounds like a band name. Um, Run of the mill grumps. Uh, That's gonna right. be our band. I know, right? <laughs> and all, we're, we're like mumble, mumble metalheads because <laughs> we're just grumps. So I think it makes sense. Anyway, um, but GameStop. I remember I had I told the I know I told this story before, but for new listeners who might not have heard the episode, I don't even remember which episode it was on. But I just remember I told the story where this lady came in and was trying to buy her like eight year old son a copy of uh, Saints Row Three. Oh yes, okay. Did, you, did I tell you this story? Uh, I briefly remember it, so please tell it again because I it's a good story. <laughs> so she was trying to buy her eight year old son Saints Row Three, and I told her I'm like, well, just so you know, this is rated M for mature. It has sexual content and nudity and all this other stuff. And she just kind of goes, yeah, it's fine. And I'm like lady like this is not for an eight-year-old in the slightest and then i went again like just so you know like there's some pretty raunchy stuff in here you beat people to death with a sex toy and she goes oh well what kind is it <laughs> what kind like that's gonna make it better <laughs> she's like well it's an anal beads we talking about <laughs> like whips we talking about dildos talking is about butt plugs like what, what are we talking about here uh, Beating people to death with a butt plug? Like, what's up? So I told her, well, it's a, it's a, it's a three foot, it's a male piece, and it's like three feet big. And she goes, oh well, he has one of those anyway, so it's no big deal. I thought that was the end of the story. I forgot about that part. No, she, oh, and I knew what shit. she meant. I knew what she meant. Yes, She's not saying anyways. her son has a three foot dildo. He has a three foot dick. <laughs> what a weird thing for a mom to say about her eight year old child. <laughs> Oh my god! What even is happening? Oh, but that was one of the weirdest. What do you, what do you even say to that? I just went. All right, uh, then on the you next, have a good you day. Twenty four ninety nine, ma'am. I don't forget or whatever the price was. I don't remember. That was, I was back say, also. You got Saints Row three for twenty four ninety nine. Holy shit! I mean, that was also back when it came out. It was it was pre owned, of course. So I was gonna uh, say that's a good price. I mean, a brand new game. Oh no, god. it wasn't brand new. It was pre owned. It was definitely pre owned. Okay. Okay. Fair. 
but uh yeah no so that's one of that's one of the weird experiences but that's great (laughs) it's just so uncomfortable man that's okay i had someone this year uh i don't remember just quickly on responses to that i had someone walk by me at work earlier this year (laughs) i can't even get through it she walks by me and like i feel her look at me like just like look at me you know Mm -hmm. and she goes you know, you'd be really sexy if you weren't so fat. Oh. And I went, thanks. It's like, well, like you got a really handsome face and like, you know, you can tell I, you've got like some good features, what? but just, you're just too fat. And I was like, Go okay, fuck well, you're yourself. too, fucking, Are you kidding you're too me? fucking ugly, but have whatever, have a good day. And she was mad. She was like, well, well I'm just trying to give you a compliment. I'm like, you just... <laughs> What the fuck kind of compliments? That, I mean, again, let me state for the record, I'm not in denial or anything. I like cheeseburgers. But who who just walks by someone not, and says something the like that? Point. It's not the point. <laughs> it's like you don't just say that to somebody. Um, it's that's so fucked up. That it kind of reminds me. I I don't know if it's gonna make it into the final cut of the episode. And I I, I think it's okay to leave this in. So I'll, it should be fine. But in the Sissy Jones episode that actually would have come out two weeks prior to this coming out, she, when we were recording with her, she told us a story how she did one podcast where the guy, (laughs) he was asking her a question about, I forget. I think it was about the owl house, which is her, which is her Disney show that's out right now. And he goes, well, now that you've done this, you've peaked, right? (laughs) Said that to the to, like, are you, you fucking peaked, me? right? Oh, well, now that you've done an interview with me, you've peaked, right? Uh, what she, did she say to that? She, made, I don't know what she said in the moment, but she, in the inter, when we were talking to her, she's like, "Well, fuck you." <laughs> Understand? I would have so. been like, "Fuck yourself," and hung up. Who the like? What an insulting <laughs> thing! Unless you, if you like, okay, listen. Let me listen. Let's like, say our okay, okay. Still loading listeners. Let's say our boy Josh gets a big gig, right? He's he's working with the angry video game nerd on something or whatever. Oh my god! I Let, love let's that. say I was talking with Josh on my show, and I said, "Hey, buddy, you've peaked now, right?" And I winked at him and blew him a kiss. That's different. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. No. But no. This is someone not that like she this. had no yeah. idea who. Uh, they, they did he say it in like other. a joking way at least, or like I have no idea. I mean, I wasn't there because that just said that the person would, said it to her. Like I would be like, "You're joking, right?" Yeah, sorry, I'm just joking. It's like, oh, okay, but like, even to joke about that, like, what the hell? Where's the Because she seems so sweet too. Like, she's just, such a nice person, man. She's like, one oh of the God. she's one of the sweetest people I've ever met in my life. And she, uh, when I was interviewing her she just she's just so nice like i can't describe but like she's just such a genuinely down to earth and nice person and i Did when you peak oh my god <laughs> like it's just, that's Fuck so fucked here. that's what so messed weed. up like it, and, those, and those are the people that you know oh yes i'm a podcaster i'm a uh, uh, fuck up. Anyway. well I, my, <laughs> this is a little presumptuous but maybe he peaked in that interview clearly that's it, right like who is he, who is he going to get another interview after that i don't know um but no for it just it was just so that was such a ridiculous story it's brutal it's so just, strange that's like being asked that's like when um someone hits you up to be on your show to promote something and you say yes and then they send you a fucking bill mm-hmm. did that happen to you yes sir that's oh wow let me tell let me tell you guys how the world <laughs> right works. into the barrel right down the barrel you do not contact somebody i don't give a shit if you're the pope okay i always use the pope i don't know why why do i always use the pope because he's a beacon of wholesomeness and joy i, guess, I have no i idea. don't give a shit who you are you do not message somebody to do a podcast with them have them say yes and start scheduling it, taking time out of their day to start doing prep, and then you send them a bill for your time. If that's your business strategy, go start licking some handrails. Anyway. Go start licking some handrails. I like and that. If you, and if you can't figure out what I mean by that, lick more handrails. Anyway. <laughs> 
Anyway, yeah, I thought that was funny. That was a good time this year. Anyway, back to um, positive, happy, fun I stuff. Know. No, this is this is a good positive. So this is fun. Uh, no, I just it. I was. Um, I totally lost my train of thought of where I wanted to go from here next. Uh, oh, let's kind of talk about some. Of, we were we just finished up talking about uh, some of the stuff we like the goals that we hit this year. Mm-hmm. That we yeah, to. yeah. Um, you were talking about. Um, I think you were kind of talking about your interviewing stuff and how like it kind of like you, well, you got I, a little better near the end of the year. I will. I, my, my goal was just to get more interviews in general. And so this year alone, I've had two repeat interviews. I had Andrew Prallo back on and then I had Sissy Jones mm-hmm. come on twice in the same year, which was cool. Um, and then I had my first game designer on, which is fun. And actually hint, hint, I won't announce who it is yet, but I have my second one coming on sometime, hopefully Ooh. in February. So Okay. Uh, okay. I don't I, even know who it is, so I'm excited. I will tell you after we're done recording. <gasps> Exclusive. Um, I'll tell you guys. Don't worry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but Exclusive. no, it just like uh, I, I was. I was happy with the reason I was happy with this year in terms of the show. Obviously, we talked about just the awful stuff mm-hmm. that's been going on outside of the content creation world. But it just it. I achieved the goals that I wanted to, and honestly the listeners have been so great this year. I mean, they're always great, but like it just, they've they've been, they've recept, I've gotten so much positive feedback, like more than I'm used to, which was like none. So this is nice that I got some. (laughs) It was none. (laughs) But um, it is just, it's a hundred percent increase from last year, buddy. (laughs) I know. Right. But the listeners have just been so nice. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The reason I'm laughing so hard is I was, uh, did you see this the spot you know the spotify wrapped thing yeah so I, was like, I, just, I, I didn't tell you this i need to tell you this now okay so you know how i said like us i had like australia had a 150 percent increase in listenership and ireland had a hundred percent yeah did you see that you know how ireland had a hundred percent how it went from zero to one <laughs> <laughs> It's a hundred percent, bro. Hundred percent. I'm sorry. I just, I just started laughing because I thought of that. I had to tell you that. <laughs> but no, like you, you had. It's, it's cool though when you start getting that kind of feedback, though. Yeah, it's. It, it was just. It turned out to be a real good year. And like, seriously, listeners, thank you so much. It. I really hope this doesn't come off as like too braggy. This is just kind of like for. This is like a behind the scenes type of thing of just like. Yeah. Not necessarily the business aspect of the podcasting game because we make fucking. <laughs> no money off hey bro this. speak for yourself just kidding uh, but uh it just it, <laughs> it i kind of like the behind the scenes type of vibe so it just i hope this is interesting for you just to kind of hear like what we think about when we kind of look back on the stuff that we've done and like what our goals are going forward and some of my mm-hmm. goals for next year is i want to do I want to get more interviews. I want to see where the interview game can go and like where different things are going. I have an idea to bring back an old episode concept in a different way, which I don't want to say yet because nothing has, if it works, it's going to be fucking awesome. If it doesn't work, then it's going to really suck having to tell everyone it doesn't, (laughs) it's not going to work. So I'm going to, I have, there's an old episode concept that I've done before and I'm going to be bringing it back. Uh, hopefully, if all things goes according to plan, and then I'll tell you once again, TJ off mic. Um, yeah, I get more exclusives. More exclusives. Uh, but then, if you guys join my Patreon, I'll tell the, you what it is. <laughs> the uh, actually, one thing I do want to ask for all the listeners for, and I'll, I'm going to probably post this on. Uh, I probably posted it already on Instagram, but I'll probably do it a couple more times. Uh, just throughout but i i really want to revamp the patreon because patreon right now like I, my friends given to it and that's fine like i don't need anyone to give to it but being completely honest even without that my benefits for giving you the patreon are fucking shit there's nothing good on them so i want some feedback like what would people want minus physical rewards because that i don't have the means to do that nor the mm-hmm. time especially we'll explain a little bit more later why my time's going to be decreased i know i keep believing especially it. coming up <laughs> You know what? I keep saying it, so let's just fucking say it. I'm going to be a father. In Yay! January. Thank you, thank you. I've I think I've alluded to it in other episodes. I'm actually I'm 99% certain I've had I have, but because of that, I'm cutting down. I was doing weekly after the summer of PS2. The summer of PS2, I you know I used to do every other week, and then starting the summer of PS2, I did weekly. And I'm like, you know what? Let me see if I can just close this out for the rest of the year and just continue to do weekly. Mm-hmm. 
But as the idea of trying to come up with four episodes a month, approximately, kept coming around, I'm like, I'm not going to have time to do this with a kid here. Excuse me. I'm going to have to like cut down. So Mario month this year is only going to be two episodes instead of four. So instead of the normal weekly for Mario month, I'm only going to do two this year. Like I said, especially because at that time, at that point, my kid is going to be only a handful of months old and it's still going to be a lot of work. So it's, I'm going to be cutting down to two episodes a month. And to be honest, I actually already recorded one of them. Like we're three mm-hmm. months out from that. I, that's how well, far. And that's it. That's another reason why I wanted to get this done with you now. Right. So like, yeah, you don't have to worry about it, but that's awesome, man. Like congrats on that. Like it's, it's exciting and I'm so excited for you and Courtney. That's awesome. And you know, you, thank you. Thank you. You can tell the kid they've got a, they've got an uncle in uh, Canada. <laughs> What would be a Canadian uncle? What would be a nickname for that? I was going to say Kunkle, but that just sounds weird. <laughs> kunkle! I want to be a Kunkle! <laughs> it just sounds like a... It sounds I'll like send a, some maple syrup. It's it great. sounds like a sex fetish. Kunkle! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. TG just buried his face into his microphone. He's disappeared. <laughs> He's lost it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my face is so red. Oh, my God. We're not going to refer to you as a sex fetish, TJ. I appreciate that. Thank You're you. <laughs> No, but but seriously, that that's that's awesome, and I think everyone would understand if you need to take a few steps back. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why I'm. I've actually recorded so far. I actually already have two episodes recorded that are going to be aired in the new year already. Um, I'm hoping to have others recorded by the end of this week. And Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to have another one recorded actually on another one's being recorded this Monday. And then I'm hoping to get two or three others done over the next two weeks. So if I can, I'll have all of March recorded before December's out. So all the way up through March recorded before December's out, which will be awesome. That's pretty sweet. I'm jealous. I want to be. It's just, dude, it's just time management. So, Mm -hmm. but, um, in any case, uh, is there anything that any other parts of your show that you'd like to talk about, TJ? Any other retrospective stuff? Any goals you have for next year, or any uh, um, things goals from last year that you achieved? Well, um, as far as last year, I did talk about, of course, the you know, interviewing someone who I was really nervous about and I wanted to reach out to, which was Hoogie, and then also Tyler as well. In a way, too, that mm-hmm. was really cool for me. Um, Building on that into next year, I want to do the same thing where I want to reach out to someone who I don't think is going to say yes. I want to reach out to someone who Shoot your shot. I think is going to say no and just see what happens. Because I, I proved to myself that I can interview someone who I am super nervous about and, and do it and get through it. You know? Mm-hmm. So I think that that that's definitely a goal I have for next year. Um, I'm going to have my episode 300 next year, which is exciting. Um, my original goal with it was to do a, a, an actual live show where I was going to have an audience. Um, I don't think that's going to happen now, but I think sometime next year Not I want to do maybe near the end of next year or something. I don't know. I do want to do a live show with an audience of some kind. Uh, that's something I want to do. I don't know why. It's just something I want to try and do. Um, but I'd say the main thing is I want to, I have a, I have a master list of musicians that I really want to reach out to. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them definitely I'm not reaching out to like just willy nilly. I need to like play my cards right and build some kind of a networking system. Basically I need to build, I need to start building a resume of, um, with all due respect to the, the fantastic unsigned artists and that, that I, I speak with on my show, which is my bread and butter. Yeah. Um, I need to start building a, a kind of a resume of people who are, you know, signed. They have serious rate. You know what I mean? Like I just, I just need to start you building that a little bit out, more. Not get, yeah, rid of yeah. what, not get rid of what built you. Cause you never want to never get that. rid of that. Yeah. I love doing it too much. I love that too much. Um, Cause if I contact say, I don't know uh, who's someone I want to have on the show. Mark Tremonti from Alter Bridge Creed and Tremonti. You know, he's a dream. I would love to speak with him. I did not know you were a big fan of him. I Creed used yeah, to be my favorite buddy, band buddy, of all time. Not if anymore. If you want no to have to a good time, get TJ liquored up, 
and put on any Creed song for karaoke. And I Can promise me I love well, no, my James more um, uh, one last breath. That's more my thing. And I'm down I, to one. Yeah. Last oh, buddy. If I'm, if I'm I even heard remotely that song in up, ages. I love, I actually like, I actually love Creed. Like I, all their records, everything. I love Creed. Creed is like the American Nickelback. They, they are for sure. <laughs> um, but well, Nickelback, Nickelback is still together. Kind of the American Nickelback too, but. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what? Sorry. Say Nickelback's still kind of the American Nickelback too. Though. A little like, bit, yeah. <laughs> but I, I know what you're saying. But yeah, no, it's it's um. But what's funny about Greed is like now Mark Tremonti is so revered because he was in Alter Bridge, and then he has his solo stuff, which is it's literally metal. But he, it's him. I remember know? I constantly had to defend his guitar playing skills to my friends who were like Led Zeppelin. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking anything with classic rock, but eh. we were like big classic rock heads who were like, you know, Led Zeppelin. Uh, their favorite, though, was um, Randy Rhodes from Ozzy Osbourne before mm-hmm. he tragically passed away or yeah. was in an accident. I forget which. Um, but like, so they're always like, you know, these were, these were the top Jimmy page, Randy Rhodes, uh, you know, Eddie Van Halen, rest in peace. We lost Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, we did. That, that was, that sucked, man. Um, not a huge Van Halen fan, but that as someone who was a guitarist and you know, that's, that sucked for sure. But it's just like, I remember constantly having to defend him. I'm like, do you listen to his solos? Like his solos are fucking sick, dude. Like, if you go back and listen to Creed, like, really listen to... Maybe not the first record, as much as I love My Own Prison. There's mm-hmm. some great stuff on there. But if you go listen to um, Weathered and you go listen to Human Clay and Overcome, like, are you kidding me? Like, especially, like, with um, with Human Clay, like, there's some serious, like, stuff in there. Yeah, and no. And I'm Tremonti such a big awesome. fan of his. And I know that... Like, let's say I just randomly decide I'm going to reach out. Never would happen. Just, there's no way. But if I said, hey, here's who I am. Here's some artists I've worked with in the past. And I say A, B, and C or whatever, whoever they are. Then his publicist will go, okay. He has a little bit of credibility at least. Worst case scenario, they can call up their publicist. Is this guy legit? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Um, or if you really want to get lucky because I'm kind of sort of always slithering. I'm like a snake. <laughs> I'm always slithering around trying to like. All right, Malfoy. Just. <laughs> but I'm. <laughs> Haha. <laughs> I'm always trying to like. My networking is what I'm trying to say here. Basically, if I could hit someone up and say, hey, here's who I am. Oh, yeah, this person put in a good word for you. Oh, you my know God, what I that'd mean? be awesome. Yeah. That's, That's got, that would it, be and, such a great feeling. And I don't want it to be like, hey, can you put in a good word for me? It's I want to build a rapport with people to the point where and that's why I haven't reached out to big, bigger names at this point, right? I want to build rapports with people who they know. So if I, if I can call up this person, we have a good relationship. And I say, hey, you know, I would never ask anything of you. Like as far as not like if you say no, it's cool. I'll never ask again. But how would you feel about putting a good word for me with this person who I yeah. idolize and would die to have them on my show? There's particularly a couple people that I kind of sort of, have a connection with now in a little bit that's kind of a, in a weird way that i'm like kind of biding my time because like it, it could pretty much happen anytime if i want it to but i'm like i don't want you to think that's why i'm have you I've in had, my circle because that's not the reason you i've know had I mean? those same conversations with people i've had on my show and i'm not going to name specifics <laughs> but like the, and I, just to be clear to the listeners like i hope i really hope it doesn't sound like we're coming off as trying to brag about these people we've had yeah, on. I, don't, no, I, don't think I, so. I just wanted to be sure because like I could some people get really upset by that because it makes it feel like the the person who you know the podcaster or the content creator is bragging about it the reason if, you, yeah, no, if, if but, you're but, happy, hold on hold on I was gonna say the reason I wanted to say that I was like the reason I, I we talk about this is like we're still small podcasters so the fact that we get anyone of note or we or someone that we look up to is just the 
best feeling. And one of the things, you know, we talk about all the time on my podcast is how much we are passionate about video games. So I get, Mm -hmm. I'm passionate about how, like I'm tr- of trying to meet people that I admire and respect and I want to see what they, and I like what they do. And I've said it before, like I'm not going to reach out to someone that I just have no interest in the work. They could be the greatest person. Because they're the a big name. Too, exactly. Right? Yeah. I never want to do that. Mm-hmm. If they reach out to me, that's different. But if I'm reaching out to them, then it's, you know, that, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. So yeah, I just, I just, I don't know. I get, I guess I get a little self-conscious and I just don't want people to think that this is like, once again, <laughs> at the beginning, like it's a circle jerk type of thing, you know, like, oh, look how this is look great and shit. I just, I don't want it to be that. I just kind of want, this is like a behind the scenes recording, just two friends, both who do content creation and podcasting and just kind of talking about like what they liked about this year, what they didn't like about yeah. this past year. What do they want to do going forward? And it's, it's, it is, the retrospective, I just, I hope it doesn't come off as a holier than thou or some kind of arrogant bullshit. I don't know. I, I just, I get anxious about that, you know? At the end of the day, if there's, this is one thing I've learned this year too. That's a good lesson for everybody. If you are excited and happy about something to the point that you speak about it, because that's how excited you are. And having people on a show that you do that you admire and you look up to it is a good thing. And if you talking about that makes people think you're, you know, oh, they, they, they. fuck them as far as I'm concerned, because you're not going, oh, yes, no, I, I got this person on and it's going to do great for me. And look at my downloads. You're not, if you were doing that, that's a different story. But like, if I was to say, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, having this person on was great for my brand. It's like, no, fuck you. Like, in fact, you know, one, of the, one of the episodes that I had uh, that I was really proud of this year, it was an interview. I won't say which one because I don't want it to be weird, but sure, the yeah. downloads didn't do as good as I, as I was expecting. And that's not, I'm not upset by it. I mean, I'm, I'll be honest. Like, I'm like, oh man, I was hoping this would do better. But like, it was one of the best conversations I ever had with someone. And mm-hmm. I, I, I don't regret that for a minute. In fact, uh, this is, this one I can say in the P- summer of PS2 episode, the Shinobi episode specifically didn't do really that well comparatively. Like there's new episodes that now have more downloads than that one. And I'm not upset by it because it was a great episode. It was one of my favorites to record and nothing. And it was nothing wrong with anything. It's just Shinobi doesn't have that, that brand. Uh, I but mean, it's, it's someone a, it's you a, admire. It's a well-known yeah. series, but not anymore. You know, it's yeah. a well-known to the retro to the retro world, not so much to everyone now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, I mean, on that same note, I mean, listen, the chat I had with Hoogie and Tyler didn't do as good as I thought they were going to do, but that's not why I had them on. Because you like you what know, they do. Exactly. Well, with Tyler, it was, I was like, this dude, con- anyone who contacts me to be on my show, I go out of my way to have them on. I don't give a shit who they are. Well, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> like, he seemed like a great guy and he wanted to help me. And I was like, fuck yeah, buddy. And he was a killer dude. Now we have a relationship and he's an awesome guy. And he's um, a talented player. So it's like the, the best interview I had for quote unquote downloads this year. I was like, what? You, you just, just never, never know. know. So um, having people on that you would. Yeah. Um, all right. But anyway, we are, we are low on time. So let's do our plugs now. Uh, where can the good people find you on the good interwebs? My good uh, sir. So you can find me on uh, for listeners of the Soul Learning Podcast. Thank you guys very much for the hospitality and having me on. And thank you guys so much for supporting my buddy Josh. Um, and Josh, thank you, of course, for having me on. It's always a pleasure to do these retrospectives with you. Um, you can find me the Harder Show um, wherever you find your podcast: Spotify, uh, Castbox, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever. Um, Instagram, Facebook at the Harder Show, and then of course Gmail at uh, the Harder Show at Gmail dot com. And uh, yeah, and Josh, be sure to get your plugs in because when I steal this episode from you, we will. <laughs> well, I always do my own plugs, even on my own show. Oh, so. for sure. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah. Make sure you, uh, um, you can find Josh everywhere. Okay. Well, <laughs> I was. I thought. Like, give me some plugs. Come on, man. Plugs? Give me some plugs. Uh, so you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Still Loading Pod on all of them. You can email me Still Loading Contact at Gmail dot com. I like talking to fans or friends and just feel free to email me. Um, you can check out my website, stillloadingpodcast.com. Also, I keep forgetting to fucking plug this. I have a merch site. You can go to tpublic. You can go to 
You can look for Still Loading merch on TeePublic. I'll include a link in the description because I forget the actual URL, URL off the top of my head. But uh, you can go there. And the most important shout out I have, of course, is the Bit by Bit Foundation. The Bit by Bit Foundation is a yes. nonprofit organization whose mission is to put video games and video game consoles in the hands of children receiving inpatient care at hospitals. So if you want to consider supporting, go to bitbybitfoundation. Uh, excuse me, I, had, I felt a burp coming and I'm like, I'm trying to hold it in to get out the plug and it just didn't make it. Uh, so if you want to support them though, go to bitbybitfoundation.com and consider donating. Uh, and that will do it. That was a, that was a, it was a fun retrospective. Yeah, it's, man. 2020 is over. I mean, well, we still got a month left after we're done recording yeah. this. Yeah, but- 2020 is not actually over yet, but well, well- <laughs> you know, I, I'm glad that we were able to do this. Thank you very much for doing this retrospective with me, Josh. And, you know, it's always fun getting to chat with you and getting to hang with you and, uh, one other goal I have for 2020 is to uh, to have Josh back on the Hotter Show for something else. That'll be fun, man. Not, uh, I'll gladly come on. It's definitely time. a goal. <laughs> that was the final episode of 2020 for the Hotter Show. Hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks so much again, Josh, my man, for your support. And, of course, doing that episode with me, it's always fun to get to catch up with you. If you want to hear some other cool stuff that we did on Josh's show, I did pull out. We played this fun game, and it was gaming-related, so I – you know, I just decided to pull it out so that if you guys want to uh, have a fun, hear a fun game where we basically play this little game where we talk about the top five N64 games of all time and what is our favorite. It's really, really fun. Uh, so be sure to go check that out. Still loading podcast. Uh, you can find them wherever you find your podcast. I'll be sure to try and remember to link them down below here as well. Go check him out. Josh is a good friend of mine and he is of course um, been a huge supporter you know, for a member of the Poverty Network, which Poverty Network, as you heard in the beginning of that, is now officially. But uh, I'm not really going to talk about it. It is what it is. Not a big deal. Nothing's going to change, <laughs> really. Um, but yeah, without further ado, you know, that's going to do it for me here today. Thank you guys so very much. Before I go, I want to give a little shout out, actually, to you guys. Thank you guys so much for your support this year. We've had a great year. I know this year's been rough. Okay? It's been a rough one. A lot of horrible stuff has happened and, you know, this COVID-19 bullshit, we're not anywhere near over with it yet, I don't think. Um, but just try your best to stay positive, you know, do what makes you happy, do what you love, hug your loved ones, at least if you can. Um, you know, life is short, man. And heading into this next year, I think we're going to need all the positivity we can get because we are uh, nowhere near out of the woods yet, I don't think. And I'm hopeful. I'm hoping that this time next year at the very latest, maybe we can start to get back to some kind of normalcy. But who knows what will happen. Either way, I'm heading into this year with a good positive attitude. I'm excited to see what next year will bring. I'm excited to uh, you know, crush some of the goals that I have set for myself here on this episode. And uh, I'm going to go – finish getting ready for tomorrow's uh as i record this it's uh the 30th i'm gonna go finish getting ready for tomorrow's festivities with my wonderful beautiful fiance and i'm gonna finish uh, a little bit of pre-game the day before with a uh, little cool beer here big shout to this company out of toronto i'm really enjoying their uh their blonde lager it is a great great beer so i'm gonna go enjoy this I opened it actually before I started recording. I should have waited. It's like a cracked open with you guys. But either way, big cheers. Clank. Thank you guys so very much for all of your support here in 2020. And I'll catch you next time on The Harder Show. Take it easy, guys.